Hey everyone, Matt Evans here. Welcome back to another episode of Board Game Replay. In this series, you're going to be joining us for a post-game discussion where we sit down and talk about our experience with the game and cut back to replay clips of moments that we found fun or exciting. Now today we're going to be playing Tales of the Arabian Nights from Z-Man Games. Now, this is a pretty unique game in that it's very light on mechanics. Very, very light on mechanics. But it's really heavily focused on storytelling and adventure. Now as usual, before I go any further, for those of you who are already familiar with this game and you don't need the rules overview or a game overview, go ahead and click here and skip right to the main part of the video. Alright, so as I was saying, this is a pretty light game, so there's not a ton of mechanics to cover, so this will be pretty quick. What we're going to do is you're going to start the game with each character placing their pawn in the middle of uh, Baghdad here, and then they're going to draw three unique skills of their choice from this pool of skills here on the side. And then on top of that, they're going to draw a quest card, which is basically just going to give them a rough idea of what to do in this game, give them a basic goal. And players will basically be spending the game exploring the world, looking for adventure, and countering all kinds of exciting things, good and bad. And in doing that, they're going to be acquiring story and destiny points. And to win this game, you need to have a certain combination of the two. And I'll get to more of that in just a second. Each turn, players are going to encounter something at their location. And this encounter could be anything from an enchanting princess to an erupting volcano. And players are going to be presented with a, a variety of choices for each of these things and how to react. And depending on how they react to that situation, they're going to be told to reference a certain passage in this giant book of tales. There's like 2,000 plus passages in this book that, that tells the player what happened. So when you flip to this and you read it, it gives you a quick story about what happens to your character in that situation. And then it might reward you with some story points or some destiny points, maybe both. But also, sometimes we even get cool things like skills or even treasures. So it's really, really cool. There's not a whole lot else I can tell you about this game without actually showing you how it works. So stay tuned. I'm going to have some friends join me and we're going to walk you through a full turn. All right, so we're going to run through a sample turn here. We're going to start with Michelle. Michelle is down here in Africa, and she's going to start her turn by announcing any statuses that she has. I'm currently blessed, which means whenever I roll the die or a dice for any reason, I may choose what number to use instead. Use that instead of what I roll. All right. Uh, now you're going to be able to move based on your wealth level. So her wealth level is poor, which means she can move up to a total of three spaces, a maximum of three on land, and two of those can be on water. Where do you okay. want to go? I'm going to do two spaces on land here, so one... Two. I'm now in Timbuktu. All right, and now she's going to draw an encounter card for the space. I have a hag. It's daytime, which means 86. All right, so I am going to look in the rule book for number 86 in the front, the rule book, the story book, and I look for number 86 in the book, and then Michelle is going to roll a d6 to determine. All right. One. She rolled a 1, and the space she is standing on, Timbuk2, has a 2 on it. So we add 1 plus the 2 for her space. Now, at certain points in the game, when we reach certain values of destiny, we might add an additional number to this die, because the higher up you go on this chart here, the, the more intense your encounter is supposed to be. So she's rolled a 1. We've added the 2 from Timbuk2 here. So now I'm going to go to 86 for the hag, and I'm going to add, I'm going to look at 3, which is destitute in this case. So you are encountering a destitute hag and it is for Matrix C that you're going to react. So now Michelle's going to look at her player board, and she's going to look at Matrix C, and there are eight different ways that she can react to this destitute hag. What would you like to do? I'm going to avoid this destitute hag. Okay. Now Jeremy is looking in the Matrix over here that's going to have that same Matrix, Matrix C, and then a reaction number, uh, basically an encounter number in this book, that he's going to tell us a page number, basically. So for destitute and avoiding, it is 512. So I look at encounter 512 in the book. All right, and Michelle is going to roll this white die now to determine whether I go one above or below 512. Above. So I'm going to 513 and I'm going to read that passage to her. The destitute hag is desperate and will not desist from pestering you. When you bid her to depart, she utters a vile curse upon you. And now, because there is a bold skill that says enduring hardship, I'm going to ask Michelle, do you have that skill? I do not. She does not have enduring hardship, so I go immediately. There's no other bolded skills to be used, so I'm going to go to no skill. You shudder and turn to apologize to the destitute hag, but she has vanished. Now there is. Now Michelle will gain a destiny point for encountering the destitute hag, Jeremy, and she will gain the status Thank accursed, which means I'm going to take this, <laughs> this card here, and I'm going to hand it to her. It's right on the top. Michelle, you would like to read what your status is? I am now accursed. The effect is, whenever I roll a die or dice for any reason, ask any player what number he wants you to use. <laughs> he may, if he wishes, examine the book of tales before he gives you a number. Use that number instead of rolling the die. 
And I will also note, and if you look at the bottom of Blessed, it says, if you gain a curse, you lose this status. So in this case, <laughs> she ran to this destitute hag, tried to run around her, and uh, she became a curse and lost her Blessed status. So now this goes away. And uh, at this point, we would check for any city cards. She doesn't have any in, her, in front of her at this point. City cards work a little differently. And any quests to resolve, which you don't have any of those nope. done. Um, and then we'd move on, check for victory. No one's anywhere near victory at this point. And we go on to the next turn. And that's, that's basically the game. That's just one sample turn. And I don't want to spoil too much of this game, so I'm not going to go through and read a ton of reactions for you. But if, if she had had Enduring Hardship in that last encounter, it would have given her a whole other option. Um, so maybe I'll read that to you now, just as an example. So when she ran into that destitute hag, if she had Enduring Hardship, she could have chosen said, yeah, I do want to use that. If she did, it would have said, you turn and soundly chastise the destitute hag for her rude conduct. You tell her of how you endure your own hardships, and she is sobered. In that case, Michelle would have gained a destiny point, two story points, and would have gained the storytelling skill. Wow. So you can see in a case like that, your skills do benefit you. And there are going to be times when you use a skill and it's actually going to trigger something bad. <laughs> if you have stealth and stealing, for example, when you encounter some royalty. It might end up, a mandatory part of having that might end up doing something negative to you, but for the most part, skills benefit you and they do kind of make the encounters more interesting. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that gives you an idea and uh, we're going to get to our game. Thanks, Isaac. That was a great... I guess we'll just start. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's somewhat thematic. Tales of the Arabian Nights, um, we finished up. Isaac is the winner. <laughs> Alibaba is the winner. Alibaba is Ali the winner. Alibaba is the winner. <laughs> but as you'll hear from us talking about this for a few minutes, it really doesn't matter. Um, I think no. all of us, regardless of who won, had a great time. You guys really have a good strategy for this? Uh, yeah, none. None at all. <laughs> uh, following the quests that are on the card. There you go. To complete them. Yeah, you kind of have a you have a rough idea. The quests, I think, was a great idea for this because it gives you a very basic idea of what to do. I mean, pretty much the game is just wandering around and like encountering some giant book of stuff. It's hoping, just a giant choose your own adventure book. Hoping your skill yeah, matches up with what's required. Yeah, hoping you find a skill that matches the encounter. Yeah, exactly. But that's that's what's awesome about it. Yeah, it's I loved choose your own adventure books when I was in right? middle school, and this is. Game right. is just the same thing, but I get to watch my friends choose things. I had a quest that started me out the game. Uh, a, a djinn threw me into some random part of the desert, and I started there in, in this city down here, and I gained the lost status, so I spent the first, like, four turns of my game just trying to explore the woods, hoping my wilderness uh, lore would, would pay off, and it, it didn't really pay off until, like, multiple Didn't work turns. well in the desert. Didn't work, so, didn't work well at all. Let, let's check that out real quick. I'm going to examine my surroundings. You think you were questioning someone, but now you find yourself confused, not aware of your surroundings. You search your memory and examine your surroundings. You think you know the way, but you're not sure. Do you have the wisdom skill? No. You may wait or follow your hunch. I'm gonna follow my hunch. I feel pretty good about that. Great. You're lost and confused. You have Sorry. great faith in your own prowess and confidently set out in the wrong direction. <laughs> Come on, man. Wah, wah. Do you have the luck or magic skill? No. <laughs> You end up no closer to familiar <laughs> land than before. Game lost. I'm gonna set forth in the wilderness! With faith in Allah's grace, you journey onward, seeking a landmark or a guide. You persevere through many great trials, but at last your body is exhausted. Come on. <laughs> Are you either determined or do you endure hardship? No. Then you collapse to the ground, not even mm, feeling the pain in your limbs. Sweet. <laughs> Destiny 2? Story 2. Oh. Yes. Uh oh! Enduring hardship. What? And you're not lost. I'm still lost. <laughs> yes. God. I'm gonna set forth, baby. Matrix G. Six to. I wasn't referring to you as baby. I, I am just kind of well aware general. of that. I was. You travel for many days, following a faint track into the wilderness. Eventually, you you lose track of him. Do you have wilderness lore or seamanship? I certainly have wilderness lore. I would like to use that. Great. Skillfully, you chart a course by the sun and stars and guide yourself back to civilization. All who you tell of your story are amazed by your cleverness. Destiny won, story won, lose lost, and gain respected. Dude, that was awesome. 
I'm <laughs> winning this game oh, okay, good. No. right now. Gain cool. respect. So yeah, it didn't pan out for me at first. I spent a lot of turns just wandering around the woods, waiting for something good to happen. But eventually, good things did happen. I gained some skills, and I moved on. And again, the whole point, it was fun. I had a good time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had a good time That's getting right. lost in the woods. What about you, man? What did you do? Well, I won. So that was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I mean, this winning this game is, I mean, it is, I mean, it's all luck. I kind of decided at the beginning of the game that I wanted to be conniving and stealthy. I had weapon using, You're acting, and I, I, I was, I was wanted to be a thief. Um, fair. So I kind of went with that and actually worked out in the end. Um, I came back in the end, even though I had uh, a bunch of statuses oh, yeah. that were uh, pretty were rough. So weird. Yeah, you were insane literally I was the entire ins game. Yeah, I think I started. It was like round Very one, round one no, or no. two. Wait, let, let's go to Quebec. You, I believe you were insane on the first turn. Yeah, I think I, w I was. Let's cut back to you going insane. He's encountering a barber. Uh, well, obviously, I need a haircut. So I'm going to seek aid. <laughs> All you wanted was a simple shave, and this man will not cease in his constant prattle. <laughs> Even after you finally make your escape, he continues to follow you about the city, constantly offering his unwanted advice on all matters of business and romance. <laughs> Sounds like every barber. <laughs> you must flee this place at once, lest your mind be driven from you. Do you have seamanship? I don't. You don't? No. I do. <laughs> you sign on with a caravan bound for Petra, but to your dismay and despair, you discover that the barber, too, has taken... <laughs> oh, no! He's just following you. You rend your garments in anguish and run screaming into the night. Story one, gain insane. Oh no! <laughs> Come on! That was my first turn! <laughs> That's not good. Oh. So awesome. People so, I mean, all of these statuses kind of bog me down, but they're not too, too bad. <laughs> There's one that I had that made me rob every time, but I actually, the skills that I had went along with that, yeah, so yeah. when I, I did do, I did have to make right. that decision that one time, it, uh, I was able to stealth uh, and steal my way out of it. Right, envious, basically. Anytime you have envious, you're forced to rob right. if it's available in one of your choices. <laughs> So you are encountering an old man? I am indeed, because what should say of right my... On an old man, what should say on that? I. Oh, I, I. You're encountering an old man on making... You have to rob him! <laughs> that was so loud in my ear. You, I, you have frightened old. me. I don't talk but this is an encounter, is Roll it? Light. Yep. <laughs> this is like a real encounter? Yes. Is this a fake you encounter? You must rob him! Roll the light. You're, we're, very, we're very excited about robbing this man. 980. 980. 980. 980. Neutral. You're robbing an old man. <laughs> you're gonna like get 12 wealth, don't worry about it. It's eight. true. All right, so you're gonna rob this old man. Right? If I get a treasure, it's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so good. Right, I'm gonna... The old man's clothing betrays him as wealthy and there is no one else about. You may rob him or follow him. I'm gonna follow him. You stealthily approach him, hoping to catch him unawares. Yeah. Do you have stealth and stealing? I do. Yeah. Would you like to use yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Would you like to use it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Stealth and stealing. You remain unobserved. Just before you can strike, the man leaps in a lake and emerges clutching a gleaming item. Is he a friendly merman? After, I don't know. After he leaves, you jump in yourself and find a cache of treasure and magical artifacts. Treasure! You grab an armload and flee before you are discovered. Yeah. Destiny 1, story 1. Wealth won to a maximum of rich and gain a treasure. Yes! 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 Oh man, you're so good. So I got game. rid. I get rid of envious, <laughs> and treasure. I do this, and I got my seek treasure. Um, that was ridiculous. Being bad or being evil is not necessarily the wrong way to go. <laughs> Well, that's interesting to me because I had heard the opposite of that when I heard about this game, that being good helps you out, but we didn't see that at all in this nope, game. No, yeah. not at all. Michelle, you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, I, you know, the couple of times that I played this game, and especially this time around, is when I play games in general, I tend to default to, like, the good guy setting, mm -hmm. just because I, like, personally feel bad about being a bad guy, but this game doesn't make you have those sorts of issues, and it's actually more fun. I find equitably more fun and more interesting for the game and sort of in your benefit to do sort of the interesting stuff instead of just the good guy stuff. So actually, I actually had a turn where I beat a hideous beggar. 
<laughs> obviously. Uh, uh, and, and why don't we take a look at how that turned out? So it's a hideous. You've encountered a hideous beggar at Matrix. Uh, Matrix C is your reaction. Please don't judge me. Mm-hmm. Attack. I'm going to beat the hideous beggar. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's really an option. Oh no! The hideous beggar cries out, and others rush to the cries. Do you have courtly graces or beguiling? Yes, I have beguiling. Would you like to use it? <laughs> yes. All right. Is there a question mark there? Or just... This is amazing. <laughs> is it that I'm so pretty they let me get away with beating the beggar? I, I don't know. Listen, as you continue the beating. <laughs> oh no! Come on! As you continue the beating, you calmly point out to the crowd the crimes of him. They join you in ministering justice. <laughs> what? Who? You just beat the crap out of a beggar! <laughs> oh Pretty. my god. Come They're on. like, come on, he totally stole my wallet! <laughs> and they all jump in and start kicking him too. But this is all based on the fact that I'm beguiling. <laughs> Correct. Um, so you gain a destiny. <laughs> Two story. You're green, right? Two story, and uh, you gain the acting and disguise skill. <laughs> awesome. So the moral there is just, you know, if you're pretty enough, then you can not only get away with beating on attractive people, but the other folks will help you. Yeah, you can get the other townsfolk to beat the <laughs> crap out of somebody too. Um, but that's kind of uh. that's what I my favorite part about this game is just the weirdo stuff like that that ends up yeah. turning out to be kind of the most fun and the most interesting in the end. Jeremy, you. You were like dead last, you know. Yeah. But <laughs> just describe your experience of the game. Yeah. I mean, despite losing, yeah. You, Who cares? Yeah, I mean, you care? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just kind of got unlucky on like round one. I became in prison, so I I couldn't move or what was it? Yeah, I, you can't move, and you have to like try to escape from prison guard and yeah. Or just continually trick know. them. You had yeah. multiple rounds stuck in jail. Yeah. Yep. Definitely failed a bunch of times. Um, but I gained, I gained eight skills. I have the most skills in the game, yep. but I did nothing with them. We, we probably have some clips of Jeremy trying to escape from the jailer and it failing miserably. Multiple times. You have encountered a practical joker enchantress. Aid. Great. Them, uh, 2362. Alrighty. Back of the book. Yeah. You offer the practical joker enchantress your respectful greetings and ask whether you may be of assistance. She looks you up and down and says, Indeed, I could use your help. There is one who owes me a large sum of money. I would like you to retrieve it for me. Do you have scholarship or wisdom? Some will be. Nope. You follow the directions on finding this person. When you do, you accost them roughly, demanding money. Aye. <laughs> you dare soil my robes with your beggar hands? Guards, arrest this vagrant. The enchantress took you for a fool, and rightly so. Next time you will get more detail about someone you are supposed to approach so that you don't run blindly into another vizier. Ooh, you just freaking punched Jafar, man. What are you doing? He's a jerk. Uh, Destiny won, gained wisdom, yeah, but imprisoned. Oh. Oh, oh no. Prison's kind of fun. You are encountering the mad jailer. How, how do you Yeah, no, I'm not going to converse. Um, I will trick him. You try to convince your jailer that you have been wrongly imprisoned by the vizier, whom you imply is corrupt. Do you have acting in disguise? Aha! The jailer is not inclined to believe you and goes off. Story one. He is a foolish guard. Foolish guard. I will attempt to trick the foolish guard. You try to fool the jailer by pretending to be ill. Do you have acting in disguise? Just trying to anything. Same thing as last time. <laughs> no? Take the same option. No? You do your best, but the jailer is not wholly convinced. <laughs> Next time you will do a better, but most likely to a different jailer. Gain acting in disguise. Yeah. Ooh, you're the sorry. mad jailer, how would you like to encounter him? I'm going to try and trick him now. The jailer is willing to free you, but his price is high. Do you have bargaining and evaluation? I tried to trick him. What? Stop trying to trick him! It has <laughs> <laughs> not worked for you! Despite your clever maneuverings, you must pay full price. Wealth minus two, but you lose imprisoned. Hey, that's something. I'm not in prison! Hooray! He was in a various number of moods. He didn't. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why he changed his mind. <laughs> so often. <laughs> it's a game that, uh you could spend a lot of time with, but um, it doesn't feel like that because you're you are right. really, you're able to discover many stories that have ridiculous outcomes and it's very, very fun. Yeah, definitely. And you want to come back to like discover the next outcome and see the yeah. next weird plot twist and drinking a mountain. Yeah, you, you literally never know what's gonna happen. Attacking you can, fire. Yeah, right. you can play this game 
a hundred times and you're still receiving different outcomes. And by the, by the time you've played it a hundred times, you've forgotten about the other encounters mm -hmm. that you're probably going to run into and the game is totally different again. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's really fun to play with people that aren't into board games as strongly. Um, so if you like have you know, people that are very, very strategic and others that, like, don't play board games ever. This is a really fun yeah. game because it's shoot, it shoots and ladders. It, it doesn't matter <laughs> what you so try true. to do. It will just be a disaster or it could be fantastic. There is no rhyme or reason. But it doesn't matter. I mean, even when you, even when the game goes wrong, that's what's, you know, I mean, it, yeah. even yeah. if or you have what, a punishing turn. Wrong by it. only the idea of points. Like, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, wrong by like you're stealing and then you get put in prison, but you still get destiny points and story points, and so you're winning now yeah. until uh, you marry the jailer who then becomes your, you know, that's right. I mean, merman or something like it just right, it's complete mess, but you still win the game. Um, it is the best, uh, creative, um, bedtime story ever <laughs> it's yeah. not it's not really a game i one of the things that we thought the whole reason like we all sat on and talked about doing this type of show where we went to like replays of stuff and discuss games was one of the things we like so much about board games is when you walk away and you're talking about it two hours later a week later mm -hmm. a, a month later and you're like remember that time when i was like at the last turn of the game and i did this game is nothing but that this game know? is all the good parts yeah yeah and you're having just as much fun on somebody else's turn as yeah. you are in your own yeah. I think that's a great point. Isaac. So yeah, I think that about wraps it up. I think we've covered everything there is to cover. We've only shown you a couple of the encounters, and through everything we've shown you, there's the chances of you encountering what we've encountered and remembering it. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna. It, we haven't spoiled anything. Uh, so, no. If if you think this game sounds even, if you ever like choose your own adventure books, you got to check this game out. It's just too much yeah. fun. Bye. All right. So with that, uh, we'll just show some gang signs and. Say goodbye. Can I go do a YOLO flip real quick? <laughs> YOLO flip. <laughs> uh, go, iPod. <laughs> All right. Take it easy. See you guys later. What gang sign is that? It's a, it's a peace sign and duck face. Is that my a thing? Gang. Is that a thing? Yeah. It's my hipster peace. YOLO gang. Okay. Do we need anything else? Oh, I didn't shut off the camera. Hang on.